Fresh guacamole, it says it's fresh, so it can't be a lie. Welcome back to Jason Diary. Today's entry is about guacamole. About a week ago, I was on a podcast. I don't know if you guys know anything about Texas A&M. It's a university. They're super rivals with uh, UT and Austin, which I used to live in Austin. And they're called the Texas Aggies. No, wait, that's the horns. Hook'em horns. I don't know what the Aggies do. Noodle, noodle, noodle. So my friend does this podcast about their college football season. They keep the podcast going in the off season. They talk about random things. And they know that I used to be an exotic dancer. Club music. Club music. Club. So they were like, any chance you'd come talk about that very interesting profession? And you should completely check it out. On with the show. Welcome back to Dear Teen Diary. Today we are on entry 13, December 19th, 2001. Dear Gregory, infatuation will always haunt the one whom is held by its unreal gaze. Calm down there, poet. Last year, Brandon M. put me through honest to God hell. Ever since, I've had like a chronic thing where he has to hate me and I must always seek his approval. He liked me last year and I liked him I'd just gotten out of a relationship with Chris P, and he was, allegedly, going to ask me out in a week to be sure I was over Chris. But instead, he started avoiding me. I was too unpopular for him. So ever since, I've wanted to gain back everything my reputation lost for me with Brandon. His respect, friendship, his love. This year, he was still giving me a cold shoulder, but I sort of got over it. But I was still wanting to impress him and receive his respect. Somehow, for the two-week period I'd broken up with Ben, he began to like me again. We'd started speaking on friendly terms again. And now, only just yesterday, did he realize I was with Ben again. I so love Ben. And I want to be with him forever. Yet my infatuation still haunts me. I neither want nor need, well, I didn't say nor, I said or, but it should be nor. I neither want or need Brandon, but I just like to have his attention. And I like most everything about him. Like, I would not mind watching him, just observing him. I definitely don't and won't love him or probably even love L-U-V him. So really, ellipses, why does he matter? Like the infatuation definition, it's irrational. Rejection from him is like 10 times worse than it should be. Sigh, how annoying, huh? Greta C, December 19th, 2001. So, there is a Canadian band called Prozac, P-R-O-Z-Z-A-K. And in eighth grade, I was completely obsessed with the band, and I continued to listen to them and put them on mix CDs all through high school. They have this song called Infatuation, which is also why I know how to spell infatuation. I-N-F-A-T-U-A-T-I-O-N. I do not want, 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 want you, want you. I do not need, 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 need you. I just like the way you walk, the way you move, the way you talk, oh yeah. Anyway, I like it a lot. You should definitely check them out. So my definition of infatuation was pretty much not wanting or needing someone, but being obsessed with them, which isn't too far from the dictionary definition. Brandon M. is dumb for not dating me in eighth grade because he liked me, and then he got cold feet about not wanting to be associated with someone so unpopular, which is a really dumb reason not to date someone. Although I kind of did that in sixth grade. Well, I didn't really like the guy, though. We were friends. We were really good friends. I called him Edward. It was his middle name. Uh, but his name is Brian. Everyone made fun of him a lot. Uh, but everyone made fun of me a lot, too. 
and then I found out he had like a crush on me and I was just really not into that. It essentially tore our friendship apart, especially because my friend Ariel at the time was like, ew, like just stop being friends with him. Brian, if you're out there, I'm sorry. I'm also sorry for that one time I ran into you in the middle of the summer when we were bicycling and I just was like, <laughs> I ran past you. That is a moment I remember probably far more often than I should and I feel shitty about it and I'm sorry <sighs> sixth grade we're way off topic now Whee! let's bring it back okay I got back together with Ben the love of my life whom I want to marry and then I find out that Brandon likes me and I'm just like frustrating because I shouldn't care and I don't want to care but I do I'm like haha validation <sighs> so well, we'll see where that goes, because uh, I almost cheated on Ben with Tom because I wanted validation through the sexery, but now Ben and I are starting to get some hot loving action going on, and uh, now a man from my past whom I desperately want the validation and approval from has reemerged as a possible romantic interest. Dun dun dun! Don't do it, Greta. <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> I've mentioned this before, but that bait and switch is completely what gets you totally obsessed. You build up your life on certain foundations of what you believe to be true, and then when someone's like, I think you're amazing, and then they're like, ha no I don't, I think you're trash. It's just wrecks your world, and you can't stop trying to fix it. You're like, no, you don't think I'm trash. You think I'm amazing. Think I'm amazing. How do I make you think I'm amazing? Ah. And, oh, oh, it's the fastest way to get someone to be completely obsessed with you is to do that to them. And it's almost impossible. Even now, one of my friends right now just kind of is having that happen with a guy, and she's like, I know better. I don't want to like this guy. I don't want to be obsessing about him, but I just can't figure out why the fuck. And I'm just like, I know, man, but you just got to shut it down. And I tell her that knowing, like, in my heart of hearts, that if I was still single and on the market and someone did that to me, I would probably still have that same reaction. I don't, yeah. It is easier if you know that that's how that happens and why that happens to just kind of tell yourself to shut up because you don't think like, oh no, clearly I feel this way because it's meant to be, like we have this connection. It's like, no, you just used mind games. You just used a cheat code on my emotions and now I can't get over you, but it's not because you're special. Well, I hope you enjoyed Dear Teen Diary today. Last entry is going to link up there. Next Friday, next entry will be linked down there. You should like my video and subscribe to my channel and tell all your friends about it. Cause it's rad. That's why you're still watching. Cause it's fucking rad. Ah, uh, you are wonderful. Go have a great day. Bye. Because in the song they go, I am F A T U A T I O N. I got this little problem that I cannot control. You put my heart in jail, but now it's on parole. I thought that you had left me alone in the rain, but I saw you and my dead heart started up again. I do not want, 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 want you. I do not need, 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 need you. I just like the way you walk, the way you move, the way you talk. Oh, yeah. And I can't let go in. Fatuation's got a hold on me. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah.